Hey, what's going on guys? Kai here, and welcome back to Let's Play Valkyrie Profile 2, Silmeria. In our last episode, we released Rochelle, so now she's free to do what she wants. And I have no idea what I'm referencing there. Anyways, in return for doing that, she gave us a parting gift to say thanks. And that item is the Expert's Experience, and that is a very, very good item. And you guys are just going to have to live with the suspense for a little bit longer because we have more pressing matters to attend to. Remember that lady who was all bent out of shape because we entered her house unannounced? Well, let's go pay her a visit, shall we? Huh? What? You see nothing. Yo, peace out, Girl Scout. Yeah, that'll teach her to give us any lip about entering her home unannounced. We're JRPG heroes. It's what we do. Anyways, let's go start the search for that dragon orb. Oh, right. I almost forgot. In between episodes, I changed my mind. I am going... I was going to do this later, but um, I'm going to have Alicia learn Regenerate Health right now. Not that it's very good, it's basically auto-regen from Final Fantasy games. You recover a small amount of HP periodically during battle. I never use it, but I am going to learn all the skills for Alicia, so there we are. And before I forget... So this item, the Expert's Experience. Let's take a look at that, shall we? Wow wow wee wah is very nice! Yeah, this item flat out gives you 300,000 experience, and it's enough to boost a character up to level 17, which if you look at our current levels, yeah, that could be seen as a little broken and overpowered, and yeah, it is, but do I care? Oh, hell no. I'm totally going to use that item because it is well within the boundaries of the game. Besides, I play games to have fun, and being overpowered is fun. Furthermore, one thing I've noticed in Tri-Ace games is that being overleveled never lasts very long. <laughs> so now the question is, who do I use it on? Well, just like stat boosting items, you don't want to use this on Dylan or Lazard. If you're new to the game, I would recommend Mithra, who's a pretty good choice, because he learns, um, what is it, Might Reinforce, which will increase your attack power in battle and he learns some pretty good menu spells as well. Speaking of Mithra, yes, I know you can release him right now to get the Holy Water of Mithra, which is an, an item that deals 10,000 damage, but um, I'm gonna wait until later to do that, because really, in the grand scheme of things, 10,000 damage, not a lot. <laughs> Trust me. So I am actually going to give this to Rufus. Now watch his HP. Yeah, it is great success. More importantly than his HP, which is nice, don't get me wrong. But let's take a look at Rufus's status. All of his stats went up quite a bit. Most importantly, his attack power and his magic power. Remember, archers have elemental attacks, and your elemental attacks use your magic power to help determine damage. He also learned Sap Power. It's our first debuff in the game and it reduces the attack power of all enemies within the radius. It is ridiculously powerful. Thankfully, in this game, debuffs are remotely useful. What a concept, right? You guys know how much I, I'm i a huge fan of debuffs. <laughs> That's no secret. But also, he learned Freezing Lance. It's an ice attack that can sometimes freeze the enemy, and against really large enemies, it gets a lot of hits. Aiming Wisp, which is very important for the next dungeon. It's going to come in handy when farming some items I'm looking for. And Stony Decree will sometimes petrify enemies. Not very often, but it, when it works, it's nice. So let's put some of these new skills to use. And whenever we get a third attack, I am going to want to use Absolute Wave. As for equipment, now that he has a decent magic stat, we're going to switch out the Skull Receptacle for a Blue Apple, just to boost his magic stat a little bit more. And I'll heal him up in battle. I'm not going to waste items on that. So, let's head on over to the Sederberg Mountain Ruins.
So, where's the orb? It might not be here. Are you serious? The tribe that guarded it often moved the orb from place to place for its protection. But the last of the Guardians have died out. Fine. What exactly are we doing here, then? Silmeria? I'll give it a try. More object reading again? We may find the orb by picking up a trail of psychic energy. Just one problem. I don't see any objects to read. If they placed the orb here for safekeeping, they would have needed a strong dais to hold it. Go find it. <sighs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> What's the matter? You, you mustn't, mustn't speak, speak to me, to me now. now. Huh? What is it? Oh, it's, uh, nothing. I'll call you when we find the dais. Man, Rufus sure learned his place pretty quick, huh? But, uh, I wonder what's going on with Silmeria. Hmm. Anyways, this dungeon is where the hand-holding stops. This is your first real dungeon in the game. Yes! We got a lot of new enemies here. We have no choice. All right, we got an owlbear, holy hell, and some kobolds. So there's a lot of items I want to farm before we finish this dungeon, but I'm going to save that checklist for the next episode. Now against these guys, you want to go for their feathers on their head. Oh, I forgot to... Mm. I don't have Mithra. Okay, well anyways, you want to use Rufus's new aiming Thinking laser. This? Hell is calling for Perfect. You. Forgot I switched in Lazard because I was going to bring him and then I decided not to bring him. We're going to save him for the next dungeon, because I really want Mithra to learn Mental Boost. Okay, so Kobolds, if you break their tails, you can get an item called the Lucky Coin. However, what I want to do is go for the guy in the back, which is the Kobold Knight, and if you break their weapon, you have a 15% chance to get an item called the Kobolda Palt. Yeah, that's a real clever game. Yeah, it's supposed to be a pun for Catapult, but they're Kobolds. Get it? Well, anyways, you want to get at least one of those before you leave this dungeon. If you do, great. If not, it's not the end of the world. So let's dash over and try to do that. Nope. Breaking their hat gives you a silver salet. So if you are low on those or you want money, you can farm them. And we're going to take a hit here. Unless... That's okay. Once you break their weapon, they deal a lot less damage. Aim for the head to finish it quicker. Okay, let me set up my party the way I want it to be set up. See, I even took off his equipment, and I just forgot to do it because I'm a scrub. The reason I want to use Mithra also is because Lightning Bolt is a really good mid-range attack, and a lot of the good items here come from attacking enemies from their flanks or from destroying the weapons, like these guys. Really good time to show off sap power which the Kobold Knights can actually use against you. So, gotta watch out for that. If you see a huge AoE, that's probably what they're gonna do. 
let's get away from that if we can. Those leather cloaks are just too good. Lightning bolt! Die! Lightning bolt! Oh, cobalt driller, nice. Maybe that's the item I'm thinking of. Either way, we got it all the same. This is no place for amateurs. And Dylan leveled up. Awesome. There's a treasure chest there, but we can't quite reach it. Hmm. All you gotta do, this one's a little tricky. But you gotta get both of these enemies crystallized. Like so, build some stepping stones, and you can come up here to get the Ram's Horn. It's a blue strengthening rune that increases your attack power by 3%. By the way, let's see what that is. Yes, blue activation. This allows you to learn Break Up for your heavy warriors. So we're going to get rid of, well, we'll get rid of this. No, we'll wait, we'll wait. I'm not too worried about Dylan, now that I think about it. Yes! No Alright, more new enemies here. Ghosts, and some falcons. Giant hawks, I'm sorry. What the? Yeah, new to this game, or in this dungeon rather, enemies can have reinforcements and the battlefields can actually be inter- I guess is the right word? You can interact with the surroundings sometimes. Ghosts um, are pretty annoying because normal attacks won't do a lot of damage, but you can use magic against them. You want to attack them from the side because if you break their candlestick, see her, notice her attacks are doing zero damage. Uh, anyways, if you break their candlestick, you get a an item that I want to get. My attacks by 20%. Another thing you can do is change Alicia's weapon to an elemental weapon, and that will allow her to deal normal damage to those guys. Ah. There we go. Do you dare to stand against me? So let's show that off. Let's go to rearm. Give her the Hilder Sword, which is Holy Elemental. And we're good to go now. Lightning bolt. And we got a Great Eagle Heart. Very nice. Those increase your attack power by Pretty easy. This is no place for amateurs. Whoa! Yeah. So best way to dodge the gases is to duck. That multicolored one is confusion, which is pretty disastrous if you run into an enemy with your whole party confused. But if not, all it does in the world map is reverse your controls, and to make it wear off, just run around for a little while. There we go. Not too bad. So we got a little bit of money, a might potion, which increases your attack in battle. Very nice. Probably want to save that for a boss.
It's here! The orb! <laughs> Amazing. Look at that glow. Hey! Isn't anybody else excited about this? I am. That is not the dragon orb. It is a seal stone formed by a geological anomaly. And what's that? A mass of energy. It is a substance without matter, normally impalpable and invisible to human senses. It resonates with my spiritual energy, causing it to radiate visible light. Photons convert energy absorbed from the roots of the world tree Yggdrasil to light. Seal stones are residue formed from the hardened sap that drips from Yggdrasil's roots. You mean, like amber from Yggdrasil? Call it amber, if you will. A seal stone exerts power over the area it is placed. It suppresses the actions of enemies bound to this location and the surrounding areas. Then, how about if we take it with us for protection? Seal stones don't just affect enemies. The bearer may also be subject to some change. If you were to carry it, Sir Rufus, then the effects would be felt by all of us. What kind of effects? I'm afraid that's just it. One cannot know until one tries. The tribe that guarded the Dragon Orb had to be very familiar with these seal stones. So, they used that knowledge in building palaces to keep the Dragon Orb safe. Sounds like it wouldn't hurt to take it with us. Seal stones constantly require a base. During the process of transferring from a dais to another dais, the carrier acts as a base. Seal stones cannot be disposed of, nor can they be held onto forever. At some point, their world-sustaining power will crush the holder. All right, so I can't handle it. You could have said that from the beginning, you know. Okay. What now? It's your call. Um... Real funny. Thanks a lot, Silmeria. Alright guys, and this is where we learn about seal stones, which can quickly turn the tide of battle in your favor, or it can bend you over and rape you. <laughs> um, basically, um, as you just heard about in the tutorial, when you hang on to a seal stone, it affects your party. When a seal stone is on a dais, like it is here, it affects monsters. And the effects are very, very ranged, and if I went over them, I'd be here all day. Um, this one here though, uh, Fog Wrath. See if we can get info on that. It's not that good. All it does is affected enemies don't chase you. Um, and this is where magic crystals come into play. Remember, if you attack an enemy while airborne, you get magic crystals, which not only increase your experience, but I also mentioned that you can use them as currency. And this is what I was referring to. Basically, if you restore the seal stone using your crystals, it returns it to the spring. And what that allows you to do is take it outside of the dungeon and use it in another dungeon. Some of them pretty cheap, others not so cheap. <laughs> so you kind of want to be picky and choosy this as to which ones time. you restore. But uh, for right now, we're just going to leave that one there because it's not worth it. You suck, Dylan. Did we get the... No, more just more kobolds. There is a rare enemy called the... I think it's a Sack Mimic that can show up as reinforcements. It's not very common, but if you happen to see one, uh, you can get a really good item by breaking its body. But just like those kobold knights, um, it's kind of rare. It's a 15% drop rate. And I wouldn't go out of my way to get that, because eventually we'll get something else with the same effect. And 
know what? I need to give Alicia her other weapon back. This is no place for amateurs. Ha! Ha! Oh, come ha! on, game. Yes! You always All want to right. fight it's every time, random people. battle like you. Really? One guy? Okay, well, this will be easy. Special service. I up my attacks. Let's see, twenty one minutes. Yeah, we can keep going. Because there's a save point over here. Now, over here, uh, if you attack the wall three times, it allows you to break through. Get some more money. Yes! Ice gem. Oh, shit, meant to jump. And a prime elixir. But more importantly, we have another light warrior relic here. And there is a specific Iron Harry art that I want to recruit here. So before we do that, I'm going to show you how to access the save point. Maybe RN Jesus will be on my side and I get it first try. So we got this weird, um, whatever this thing in here is. All you gotta do is trade places with it over and over again until you get to the bottom. And you push it over to this red area here. Yeah, it's a little tricky. In doing so, it does block off that hidden passage. So, um, yeah, it's real easy to miss that room down there. And here's the save point. So I'm going to save my game and meet you guys back here when I have the character I want in question. And I'm going to list both of the possible characters down below in the video description. That way you can decide who you want to bring. Hey, yes! You only have a 30% chance to get Celeste out of this relic, and it took me about four tries, but it is totally worth it. Remember we read a story about her back in Japan? Yeah, we have the warrior princess Celeste on our party. But is it really worth it to save your game and reload so many times? How good is she? Well, you guys will just have to wait until next time to find out. But until then, as always, Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good day. See you then.